Even now in 2020, more smartwatches are still pricey wee buggers, especially if you want a dedicated fitness wearable. But Huawei is trying to shake things up a bit with this colourful wee chap here, the Huawei Watch GT2e. Sure, the name might be less than brilliant, but the hardware is solid, especially considering that affordable £160 asking price, which is well under half the cost of one of them Apple jobbies. I've had the Huawei Watch GT2e strapped to my arm for over a month now, and although it is admittedly limited in some areas, it's definitely a great budget option for anyone who's slightly more than a casual fitness enthusiast. So here's my full Huawei Watch GT2e review, and for more on the latest greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up, I absolutely adore the design of this thing. My arms have about as much meat on them as the average barbecue buffet chicken drumstick, so smartwatches do tend to look rather massive and ridiculous on me. But for a 46mm effort, the Watch GT2e is surprisingly sleek. That chassis is a blend of stainless steel and plastic, and it's as light as it looks at just a shade over 40 grams, so even weaklings like me don't feel weighed down. It's definitely a comfortable wear. And more importantly, it's a seriously tough nut as well. You see, my body coordination basically ranks down at the rubbish end of terrible. I'm constantly waving my arms around like some sort of drunken marionette and accidentally smacking things like the wall or random family members. Like you know that movie Ratatouille where the chef guy's having all of his movements controlled by the rat? Well basically just imagine that except where the guy and the rat are both blasted out of their minds on vodka and that's basically me. But despite being smacked off all kinds of hard surfaces and sharp corners, the Huawei Watch GT2e is absolutely pristine even after a full month. Not a single scratch or nick on that screen or on the actual chassis itself. It's perfect. And I definitely prefer this more traditional rounded finish as well compared to the square design of the Apple Watch. It's not quite edge to edge, but you do get a pleasingly skinny bezel and you do get minute increments etched on there as well, which is great if you opt for an analog always on display. The screen is almost completely flat as well, with only the slightest tapering as you reach the edges. It's lovely stuff. You've got four colour combos that you can choose from with Huawei Watch GT2e. I'm definitely a massive fan of this darker chassis with the bright lava red strap, very vibrant and in your face. But if you think that's a bit too wild and crazy, you can go for more subtle subdued efforts like white and black, and also the nice bit of mint green as well. Now the Watch GT2e doesn't actually use Google's Wear OS or anything like that. Instead, it uses Huawei's own proprietary software. Now admittedly, setting up the watch can be a bit of a pain in the ass if you don't have a Huawei smartphone, because what you'll have to do is download Huawei Huawei's own app gallery store in order to then download the Huawei Health app, which is the latest version which then supports the Huawei Watch GT2e. You'll have to download some other bits as well, and then finally you're ready to connect and good to go. Once you're finally all hooked up though, you'll be able to enjoy all of the usual smartwatch features. The customizable notification support gives you a buzz on the wrist when your favourite apps get an alert, which is good news if, like Aerosmith, you don't want to miss a thing. You can change the strength of the vibration to suit your own particular taste as well, and that top setting, it'll definitely give you more than a tickle. You can also fully customise that watch face as well, choosing from a selection of offerings. And while there's definitely not as much variety as you get on the likes of the Apple Watcher and Wear OS, there's enough variety here to suit basically all tastes. Very few of these watch faces unfortunately include the option to tweak the individual elements, but I didn't really find it an issue thanks to the variety on offer. Now by default, the Huawei Watch GT2e supports raise to wake and keeps that 1.4 inch OLED screen turned off most of the time, but I prefer to have a bit of always on display action so I could just casually glance at my watch face instead of having to do the old dramatic arm lift every time I wanted to check the time. Of course, the selection of always on displays is considerably more limited than the standard watch faces, but again, at least you've got a choice between analog or digital, and I do like this funky neon effort. The actual watch interface is nice and intuitive as well. All you need to do is swipe up to reach your notifications, down for your settings and quick toggles, and then left and right to uh, look at a variety of panes, most of which are fitness related. It's pretty comprehensive coverage as far as your health shenanigans go, just for a quick update on your various stats and how well you're doing that day. Plus you also get a quick glimpse of whatever the weather's up to and fast access to your media controls too. Now the Huawei Watch GT2e is also capable of automatically tracking any exercise that you're busy getting involved with, although it was distinctly hit and miss. Sometimes I thought I was out for a jog when I was actually just taking a stroll to the post box just down the road. But it does say, do you want to stall this exercise? You can then either accept or dismiss, so it's no biggie. 
but you can start a session manually easy enough and after an update the watch can now track something like a hundred different types of exercise which has proven surprisingly ideal for lockdown because a whole bunch of indoor activities are now trackable there's lots of dance for instance even a bit of belly action high intensity interval training boxing martial arts all of that stuff is present and correct and you can do a good bit of swim tracking as well because it's 50 meters water resistant although of course unfortunately I haven't been able to test this out because sadly I don't have a swimming pool in my back garden however I did have a lovely hot bubbly bath with the Huawei Watch GT2 e straps on my arm and it's been absolutely fine so hooray when you monitor your workout you get a glimpse of some key stats right there on the face so you know if you're hitting your targets as you work out and when you're all done you'll get a pretty comprehensive overview of how you performed for runs walks cycles and the like you can see your distance covered calories burned average pace your cadence and so on and so on and the built-in gps accurately tracks your motions you get a detailed readout of your heart rate throughout too while the watch gt2e can also monitor your blood oxygen levels when you're all done if you activate it and then sit still for a minute or two one thing i couldn't quite work out was does it actually matter what kind of indoor activity you choose though when you're doing some sort of indoor fitness effort be it taekwondo or ballet it's basically taking a reading of your pulse and all that kind of stuff and working out how many calories you've burned based on that information. However, I've got to say that information did seem to marry up with whatever other gear I was using. So for instance, I had my Oculus Quest on doing a bit of box VR, the calorie burn reason was pretty much identical on the VR headset and also my watch. So that's good at least. And outside of the exercise, the watch GT2e can also help to monitor your stress. And it's got a good bit of breathing exercise action built in there as well to help relax you, calm you down a bit. You can do 24 hour stress monitoring and this takes into account your pulse and activity levels and seems reasonably accurate if a bit basic but I definitely liked those breathing exercises when I needed to take a moment just to cleanse my brain which frankly these days is pretty much every few minutes and as usual with these smart watches you can also track your sleep sessions as well to see how well you snooze how often you drift into that sort of deep sleep territory throughout the night and as usual it's not completely accurate often failing to recognize when you've actually woken up unless you actively thrash about the place but it is a respectable complement to that stress monitoring for giving a more complete picture of your mental well-being and you even get full explanations for all of the different readings which is nice so all of the major features that i'd expect to see on a smartwatch are pretty much present and correct but unfortunately your app selection is rather limited once you get past the fitness stuff the sleep tracking and all that stuff i just banged on about you can control your music on the Huawei watch gt2e as well and even hook up a pair of headphones direct over bluetooth and listen to tracks that you've imported to the watch's four gigs of internal storage which all works seamlessly and you've also got basic tools like a timer and an alarm function as well but unfortunately that's pretty much where it ends unlike the apple watch and wear os watches as well you can't download fresh apps from an app store so what you see really is what you get unlike more expensive options like the apple watch there's no nfc support so that means you can't use contactless payments there's also no built-in mic and speaker either so unlike the original huawei watch gt2 you can't take calls on this thing and there's no voice assistant support and there's no cellular or wi-fi support either but that doesn't really matter because you can't take calls on it you can't use it to download apps on the go anything like that still if you you can live with these emissions the way we watch gt2e does hold up well in most other areas the built-in kirin chipset makes for pretty smooth performance most of the time while the oled screen is sharp perfectly bright and super vibrant and one of the major advantages of the huawei watch gt2e as well where it absolutely creams the competition is the battery life even with that always on display active and basically all of the features switched up to the maximum levels you'll still get a full five to six days of battery life on a single charge if you knock off that always on display and sort of a bit more casual with some of the features then you'll easily get double that closer to the two weeks that Huawei actually stated in its press release. And there you have it, that's my full review of the Huawei Watch GT2e after a full month of use, and it definitely really, really good for you fitness enthusiasts, especially now that we're all basically stuck in our houses, plenty of indoor exercise support, which is great to see. I love the display, I love the battery life on this thing, and yeah, as long as you don't want the expandability of being able to download different apps and a plethora of watch faces, there's plenty here to keep most people entertained. Now you can grab the Huawei Watch GT2e right now here in the UK for 160 60 quid. Be great to hear your own thoughts if you've personally been testing out the Huawei Watch GT2e as well. Please leave your own mini review in the comments down below. And please do also pop subscribe, ding that notifications bell, do all the usual, usual YouTube shenanigans. I can't even talk anymore. I'm losing my voice. This was a really long review. Sorry for everyone who's actually made it this far. Jesus, you deserve a medal. And have yourselves a lovely week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.